Hello, watch enthusiasts. Now, bronze watches nowadays are by no means a novelty concept. One sees some very well established brands, such as Tudor, for example, producing bronze timepieces in their ranges. And so, as a result, it really is worthwhile paying attention to this material because it behaves very differently to steel, titanium, or gold as the conventional choices for watch cases. And the beauty of this, of course, is that it's a material that changes with time, that alters itself, and also is, of course, very well suited in the traditional sense to the marine environment. And this piece I'd like to speak about today is a new piece from Spinnaker. And I spoke about Spinnaker's watches a, a number of years ago, in fact, um, in some of the, the early days of my channel, with some of their more affordable dive watches. And this is a brand which, bearing in mind its name, is very much inspired by the sea. But this is their first Swiss-made timepiece, and they chose bronze as the, uh, the, the material of choice for this particular model. And I was contacted earlier in the summer regarding this piece and regarding producing a review, and I'm pleased to say that now that I've received it and worn it for a few days, it's, it's a very interesting piece to consider, on the basis that it's something which offers extremely good value, but also a very, uh, very uh, feature-packed package, with a very impressive bezel, as well as a very impressive dial, a high-quality movement, and a case which is finished in a very classical way, but nonetheless with a very high level of quality, which really does stand the test of time in terms of, uh, of uh, being used in, uh, in quite, uh, quite testing circumstances and being used to, uh, to the maximum extent this watch really would be used on a daily basis. Of course, as is always the case with these videos, I would like to start, before speaking directly about the watch, with the statement that I'm not being paid to produce a favourable review. I realise there is sometimes concern amongst, uh, amongst uh, viewers of, of, of videos and, uh, and readers of articles alike in the world of wristwatches that, uh, that reviews are simply paid for in terms of the quality and in terms of the features, but I would like to confirm that I'm not being paid to say anything in particular about this watch, um, and so as a result I, I, um, I like to keep my videos impartial in order to make them more useful to you, my viewers. But speaking about the watch directly, one first has to address the name that Spinninger have chosen for this watch. And that name that's been selected is the Teze. And Teze is a, uh, a name which those who, uh, who enjoy naval history will recognise, because the surname of uh, Tezeo Teze, who uh, was a, a very important, uh, in terms of uh, military diving, a very important individual in the Italian Navy. And he was, uh, was accredited with the, the invention in 1931 of what was called the Maiale. And, uh, of course, that means pig in Italian, but what that refers to is the, the first man torpedo. And those who also like Panerai will know that uh, these were used extensively throughout the Second World War and the late 1930s as the first means of, um, of, of submarine attack uh, within ports and harbours. And of course these are linked very carefully and very, uh, very clearly to the history of Panerai, for example, who, uh, who were the, the, the manufacturer of watches for this group. But one does have to, to also remember the fact that this is very much a celebration of a period in the past of diving which was very different to what we would view it as being today. And I think the interesting element to note also about a dive watch with a bronze case is this isn't a modern concept. Whilst these cases have become very popular in recent years because of this fascination with the vintage, I feel it's, it's overlooked the fact that cases in bronze were produced in the 1950s, for example, for, uh, for Blancpain, for instance, with their 50 fathoms, which was produced in some examples in bronze, which is interesting to consider, bearing in mind the, the historical nautical applications of bronze, when one remembers the fact that uh, it's a material which was, uh, was far more suited to the sea than, uh, than many forms of steel, as a result of the fact that its, its patina creates a very hard coating over the surface of it, and ultimately protects the bronze itself. Of course, to note the general principles of this watch in terms of how it's been conceived, where size and design is concerned, of course the design is immediately recognisable as a very conservative style of dive watch case. But it does come in a rather unconservative size of 43mm from side to side, and 17mm from, uh, from bottom to top. And it should be noted, though, that these, these dimensions are somewhat misleading, because I have uh, very moderately sized wrists, they're not particularly large and they're not particularly small, but this fits extremely well due to the form of the case back which sinks into the wrist and reduces the thickness to much closer to 14mm than the full 17 However, there is one element which is quite long, which is the lug-to-lug -lug length, which comes to 51mm, but bearing in mind the fact that the watch is indeed uh, 43 millimetres in, uh, in diameter, this does still seem very moderate, and the general curve of the lugs means it's still very comfortable to wear. One also notices the fact that there's a, a very thick bezel on the, the front of the watch, which is thicker than you would, you would immediately uh, assume on a watch which shares a lot of its design cues with the Rolex Submariner. But certainly this does create a greater real estate around the dial, and means that you have a greater legibility in these, these areas. 
Of course, as is the case on the vast majority of bronze watches, its case back isn't bronze, but rather steel, and similarly the helium escape valve, placed on the, the left-hand side of the case, is also steel, whilst the, uh, the, the crown does share the, the tone of the case, and the bezel also is bronze. And really the reason for these is because um, of the, the reactivity of bronze, which means that for some people the, um, the, the bronze will react with sweat on their wrist and can cause a certain amount of irritation if there is a full, um, a full bronze case back. While similarly the buckle is in fact stainless steel, but uh, finished to look like bronze, which again is a wise choice because uh, it's really best to, to avoid those uh, rather unpleasant green marks on your wrist that you can get with bronze if it's directly in contact with sweat. But where the rest of the case is concerned, one has this fantastic tone to the bronze. And bronze, in many ways, is a material which has to be accepted to be behaving uh, very differently to steel. Because whereas steel, you can be quite certain, um, will remain the same colour for the vast majority of, of cases, irrespective of what you do with the case, um, you can't really say the same for bronze. Now, when I received this watch a few days ago, it was a, 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 very, a, a very bold style of, of golden colour with a slightly pink tint, tint to it. Within a few days, it's changed to this this rather attractive, um, but very different, darker colour, with several blotches coming up where it had been um, had been subjected to uh, um, to water and so on. And I should should note this doesn't uh, compromise the integrity of the case in any way, um, but merely changes the surface colour. And it really is a, a reaction with the surface of the the bronze itself, which creates these wonderful colours. Because as you can see, you get greens to the case, dark greys, blacks. You can even get blues and very bright greens if you, uh, you make it react with certain chemicals. But suffice to say that it's a very organic process, because you, you develop these, um, these colours and these patches as time goes by, without ever, ever uh, compromising the functionality of the timepiece itself. Of course, the beauty of bronze is also the fact that because of its various uh, shapes and forms on a watch case, it develops patina in different places more or less quickly. Most notably, for example, in the, the individual um, uh, marks and... Uh, and details which have been picked up on the bezel, for instance, one sees that a great deal of them have accumulated within the knurlings of the bezel. And so this creates a wonderful contrast and allows every detail of the watch to appear more interesting as it develops over time. But one mustn't mistake the fact that this watch is a professional dive watch in, uh, in the true sense of the fact that it has a 300 metre water resistance, a screwed in case back, a unidirectional rotating bezel, which I'll talk about a little bit later, and a screw down crown which with, uh, with large crown guards. It also features the quirk of a helium escape valve, which isn't useful for the vast majority of us, but is an interesting uh, touch to the fact that this watch is designed for professional diving. Because, of course, in saturation diving, um, under, um, under the, the, uh, the high pressure that people are kept under during, uh, during the, the weeks of work uh, beneath, uh, beneath the sea, uh, helium is able to penetrate the seals of a case, and so upon decompression one needs a valve to release these particles. Though, of course, the vast majority of us who don't do any sort of saturation diving will never have a need for this. It's rather a nice touch to have and adds a bit of a technological form to this timepiece. But really with this watch, it's the details that are, uh, are most striking. Because starting with the bezel, one has a 120-click bezel, which, as you can see, rotates very, very easily and very cleanly from, uh, from click to click. And whilst this watch has, has developed a patina and, uh, and the surface has changed colour, I haven't noticed any change in the action of the bezel. And once set, the bezel doesn't have any play, which I like to see in a watch, especially at this price of 850 US dollars. The bezel insert is also beautifully executed, because as you can see, it features this, um, this, this dark brown matted ceramic insert. And whilst it may not be immediately obvious in this lighting, the, the insert actually matches the dial perfectly to give this wonderful coffee sort of, um, sort of colour, which is not immediately uh, noticeable or, uh, or easily read, um, in terms of its, uh, its coloration, one reads it as black, but upon inspection creates this wonderful softness to the tone, which offsets the strap and the case very, very well. And of course, a variety of different colours for the dial and the, uh, the bezel are available, with blacks and blues also, also available. Though I must say, I do rather like this brown coloration, because it is something just so fundamentally different. And this, of course, leads me on to the dial. Because the dial takes an inspiration from a variety of different origins and different, uh, different areas. Because as you can see, it's a multi-layered dial. It, around the edge of the dial, one sees the, the minute or, uh, or, or uh, second track, which is made, made up of these large beige indices, in addition to, uh, to applied indices, which, uh, which mark every five minutes, and of course feature a luminous compound uh, it's put into their centre. And in, in the case of this watch, it's superluminova, which will give a, a very fair and, and bright uh, charge 
and uh, indeed I believe this is C3 because of the green, green, green tonality of the, the loom, though I'll show you that later on in the video during the loom shot. But I like the fact that they've, they've maintained a very clear and distinct separation between the different levels of the dial. One notices the fact that these indices are raised above the centre of the dial, which features these wave patterns. And these wave patterns are very deeply engraved into the surface of the dial, and again feature uh, elements which are applied to that, with the Spinnaker logo applied at the 12 o'clock position, automatic and 300 metres below, with the, uh, the depth rating in red, as a hint again to, to older Rolexes, for example. The attention to detail with this dial appears more and more as you inspect the watch further, because the date window, for example, is a very good example of this. Of course, it is rather nicely, um, uh, rather nicely edged with uh, with applied metal in gold, of course, to match the uh, the, the different uh, indices around the dial and the Spinnaker logo. The the dial has also been designed around this concept because, as you can see, the the date window sits exactly on the edge of that external ring around the edge of the dial, and this really does show care taken to create a uh, an altogether and very well put together concept for a, a dive watch dial. Of course, the size of that um, that distance between the centre of the dial and the date windows is, um, is defined by the movement, but they've worked around this very, very well to create a very interesting design. Of course, they've also fitted it with a black date wheel, which is very fitting, really, for this, uh, for this dark dial to enable it to, uh, to be legible, but also not to be overly visible. The hand choice is another interesting piece, because to match the, the, the elements on the dial and the case, they're finished in this golden tone. They feature a bevel down their centre, in addition to full brushing, which means they catch the light very nicely, and allow you to um, to enjoy their shape and their form without having to, to inspect them too closely to appreciate these details. In terms of form, they're very simple and follow the sort of squale school of 1970s dive watches, with these, uh, these elongated baton-style hands with full loom inside them, in addition to a slightly wider hour hand in the same style, with a wider loom plot and a paddle-style second hand. And sitting atop all of these elements is a boxed sapphire crystal, and the sapphire crystal in, in this box format is an expensive process to, to put together. This is something which is very well known amongst small brands, that it's a difficult process to produce these at a reasonable cost as a result of, um, of the complexity of manufacturing it, but they've achieved it very, very well on this watch. As you can see, it sits atop the, uh, the dial very, very nicely, and just off the edge of the bezel. Now, the important element about this is that it means that you get all of the enjoyment of a subtly domed crystal with this box edge, in addition to not snagging on anything as a result of being almost flush with the bezel, which means they really have taken care to consider this, and I think as a whole product where the front of this watch is concerned, you're getting a very interesting package. And again, the details do spring out, such as, for example, that pip at the 12 o'clock position on the, the bezel, which actually features a, uh, a raised pip, despite the fact that all of the indices are luminescent, in order to make a, a more easy target to see in the dark, which is a nice touch and something, something very interesting. But if one flips over the watch, you'll notice the fact that the movement is visible through an exhibition case back. And as I said earlier, the, the case back on this watch is steel in order to, uh, to, to prevent any reactions with the skin. And this is a very standard practice and I think works very well, especially since it has this, um, this window in it, so you wouldn't really want it to, to change shape too, too significantly. But really, in terms of what this case back provides, is thanks to its screw down, uh, screw down form, is a 300 meter water resistance. But importantly, it's formed in a very similar style to Rolex casebacks, with this knurling around its edge, although this does also feature conventional uh, caseback removal hot slots here, um, and around here in six positions, to make it easier to remove if you're not going to use Rolex-style tools. But I think the attractive element about this is that they haven't copied this sip merely for, for aesthetics, but really because um, it, it fits extremely comfortably on the wrist, and I'll, I'll describe that later on. But the reason for it is because it's very heavily domed, which means it'll sink into the wrist rather than sitting flat on the wrist and feeling thicker. Now, as you can see the movement, this, this watch uses the Sleater SW200 with a custom Spinnaker rotor. And the Sleater SW200 is very much an industry standard, with a 38-hour power reserve running at 4 hertz, thus giving you that very smooth second run, as you can see, in addition to the fact that it is automatic, and, and of course is a Swiss-made movement, which is incredibly well-proven as a result of its history um, in the ETA2824 style of movement. The difference really is the fact that this has one extra jewel, and also um, the parts tend to be more easily accessible for these, what, these movements than uh, ETA2824s nowadays, and so it's rather fitting to have this on this, uh, this particular timepiece, because it delivers a, a great deal of quality, and, uh, and really the sort of movement you would expect in a watch of this price range. 
Of course, after speaking about the movement, one has to note the crown is also very nicely detailed, with the Spinnaker logo engraved rather deeply into its top, but with a very conservative style of crown, as you can see, with a very easy-to-grip knurling and a very large size. And what this means is that despite the fact the crown is guarded, one can easily get a good grip on it and then unscrew it. And of course that means that it pops out, and then of course is hacking, as well as having a hand winding function and a quick set date. And then can easily be screwed back in simply by, uh, by turning it back, engaging the thread, and then screwing it in. Which gives a very firm action, exactly what you'd expect from a dive watch of this type. And of course this accentuates certain elements on the front of the, the watch. The fact that this, uh, this, this crown gives that, that very firm feeling means that you have time to really engage with the watch in terms of unscrewing the crown and screwing the crown back in. Because often on watches with, uh, with crowns which are very small, the process of screwing in the crown or unscrewing the crown can be very difficult and complicated because one can't get quite the right purchase on the crown. But with this one, there are no such problems, which is a real benefit to this particular design. On the wrist, the watch presents a very different feeling to what you might expect from the dimensions which are put forward by the spec sheet. Because as you can see, the watch does wear quite large on my 7-inch wrist, but nonetheless, I, I wouldn't have any trouble wearing this watch on a slightly smaller wrist either because of the curvature of those lugs. But I think with its very bold bronze coloration, you can accept the fact that it's a very bold design, and so I think wearing it as an oversized watch isn't a problem if you want to, uh, to extend yourself to slightly larger sizes. And with that 51mm lug-to-lug -lug length, it certainly appears on the large side, but doesn't appear unmanageable, especially when clamped very nicely down by the strap which is provided with the watch. And the strap is this, this Italian-made water-resistant leather strap, which, uh, which is treated particularly to give it that water-resistant element, and gives a wonderful smell as well. And in typical Italian style, the quality of the leather is extremely high, and indeed higher than anything I've seen at this price range from, uh, from, from Spinnaker before. But similarly, one has, um, one has stitching, which is again minimal in that Italian aesthetic, in grey, in addition to some elements on the, uh, the, the, the rear section of the strap there. But the quality of the strap also extends to the fact that the, um, the, the, the inner loop with the, the buckle is tapered ever so slightly in terms of its thickness in order to enable the strap to be thinner at the, at the buckle, which is a detail which I think is greatly appreciated by the wearer, but is perhaps not, uh, not always accepted as a, a concept by brands that are producing these straps. And so it's great to see a strap which is of really very, very high quality to complement what is a, a very well-made watch. And just uh, for, the, uh, for the record, the, the strap also features a 22mm a section at the, the case, which means there is a 22mm lug width. Now, it's the details also that spring out when worn on the wrist, because Im immediately that very large bezel area in matted ceramic springs out as something which is both uh, understated, but also very delicate in terms of its form in relation to the very bold and very bright coloration of the case. And so on the wrist, this is a very impressive piece, and of course, thanks to the fact that the crown is, say, is wide, but not particularly tall, one doesn't have any problems with it catching on the wrist, which is a real benefit. Now here's the watch in the dark, and as you can see it's quite a remarkable sight, because the luminescence of this watch is, is really extremely complete, and very very thoroughly applied. Now as you can see the most immediately striking element is the bezel, which is fully luminous with loom in this, uh, this C3 superluminova form, applied to the individual indices and numerals around the full circle of the dial, whilst there's a slightly brighter pip at 12 o'clock at the centre of that triangle, which both gives you a focal point to see, even as you rotate the bezel to line it up with the minute hand, but also enabling you the, uh, the, the ability to have a, a bezel which will last a little bit longer in terms of its bright loom. Then the dial is also very thoroughly applied with loom to the indices, in addition to the hands. And there really is no danger of mistaking the hands, because one, one can very clearly see that the hour hand is wider than the minute hand, and much shorter. Then of course there's the unmistakable silhouette of that, uh, that paddle second hand, which again rotates around the dial and, uh, and, and gives a very clear indication of the seconds and indeed crucially for a dive watch, of the fact that the watch is running. There is an, a marked absence of a, a luminous marker at the 3 o'clock position because the date is placed there, though any owner of a Rolex Submariner will, uh, will accept this and, and will certainly see the fact that uh, this is no major problem. But certainly there's nothing to fault where the legibility of this watch is concerned, bearing in mind that the C3 Superluminova on this watch lasts a very long time. I've seen bright loom on this watch lasting about 6 or 7 hours, which is really all you need for a night's, uh, a night's use especially if you're wearing this watch outside, for example. You'll only spend a few hours, really, reading the time, and so I feel this is a perfectly suitable application of Loom. Now, before I wrap up the video and discuss the, uh, the, the general conclusion I would have about this watch, I feel I should talk about the availability of this timepiece. Because the piece is, is currently on sign-up, and I've included the link down below for people to sign up if they want to, 
because you can sign up to to um, to the, the the waiting list for these watches until the 24th of October. Then on the 25th, this watch will be released in pre-order state for a reduced price, though it hasn't been confirmed what that price will be. And then by the 5th of November, they will be shipping. But uh, after that week's pre-order, after the 25th of October, they, they will uh, rise to their standard price of 850 US dollars. But even so, I think that's a very moderate price, bearing in mind the amount of watch you get with this fantastic case and the amount of features you get, because you get a professional dive watch with that extremely legible loom, in addition to a beautifully designed dial, a wonderful case and a very reliable movement with that fantastic bezel. And so in conclusion, I really would say that I have very little to fault about this watch. I think it's a really fantastic concept in terms of, in terms of bringing together vintage inspirations and designs into a package which is affordable, but also which is highly attractive. And I think in a world where, uh, where, where bronze cases are, are sold for a premium, it's nice to be able to access something which is, which is well-priced, but also very feature-rich to the, the buyer and the consumer. And so do tell me in the comments down below what you thought of this video and this watch in general, because I'm very curious to hear what you think of bronze watches as a concept. And so if you did enjoy the video, then please do like, share and subscribe to help the channel, and also to see more content here in the future. So thank you very much for watching. This is Arm the Watch Guy, out.